In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another dynamic array function that is so useful in many different situations, and that is the sequence function. Now, sequence helps us fill down lists of numbers in a really efficient way. So before we dive into our example, let's just take a quick look at sequence in its simplest form. So I'm just going to type in sequence somewhere over here. And notice that we have four arguments, but only one of those is mandatory, the first argument. Now, in this example, we're going to use all of them. So let's say that I want to just quickly fill down numbers from 1 to 10. The first argument here, rows. Well, I want 1 to 10, so we're going to have 10 rows, comma. How many columns do we want to fill these numbers down in? Well, I just want them in one column, so we need a 1 in there. What's my start value? Well, if I wanted to go from 0 to 10, I could do that. I want to go from 1 to 10, so my start value is 1. And then what's my step value? How much do we want it to go up by each time? Well, my numbers are consecutive, so the step value is going to be 1. So if I close the bracket and hit enter, you can see that's exactly what I get, 1 to 10. So this saves us from typing in the first two numbers and then using the fill handle to drag down. Now, I will say that for small sequences like this, it might be quicker just to do the more manual method. But imagine if you had 20,000 rows of data. You really don't want to be spending your time dragging your mouse down from 1 to 20,000. That's going to give you a wrist ache. Of course, there are other methods we can use to fill down numbers, such as fill series, but sequence is a really quick way of doing this. Plus, it's a dynamic array function, which means it's more flexible and we can combine it with other formulas. Now, let's just double click and let's just edit this. So you can see another example. Maybe this time I want uh, 15 rows and maybe I want to have four columns. And my start this time is going to be 5, and let's say I want to step by 10 each time. When I hit enter, that's exactly what I get. I get 15 rows, 4 columns, we're starting at 5, and each time we change numbers, it's going up by 10. So that is the basic premise behind the sequence function. And there are so many different scenarios in which you can use sequence, so let's take a look at a practical example. Now over here you can see that I have a list of training courses and I've decided that I want to complete a different training course every Friday starting on April the 5th, 2024. So what I want to list out here in this training dates section are all of my training dates. So these are going to be dates from every Friday. This is the start date and then I want to add in the course I'm going to do. So we can use sequence to help us fill in these dates. So let's type in equals sequence. Now, when it comes to rows, rows is where we enter in a number for the number of rows we want to fill down. Now, again, I have a reasonably short list of training courses, so I could simply just count them and enter the number. But if you have a very, very long list, you're not going to want to spend time counting. So let's get Excel to count the rows for us. So we're going to go straight into account A and I want to count the training courses. Close the bracket. We're now back into our sequence function, how many columns? Well, we're just filling the training dates down in one column, so we want a 1 in there. What's our start value going to be? Well, our start value is going to be the start date. That's when we're starting the first training course. Now, I want to list down training dates that are every Friday, starting on the 5th of April. So my step value is basically going to be 7, because we're going up by 7 days each time. If I wanted to go up by 2 weeks, I would have a 14 in there. So we're going to add 7, close the bracket, hit enter, and notice that we get our list. It looks to be the right length, but these numbers currently aren't formatted. So all we need to do here is go up to number formatting and change these to short date format. And what we should find is that the first training date is the same as the start date. That's the date we're starting the first course on. The next training date is a week ahead. So it's the next Friday, so on and so forth through all of these dates. And then, of course, I can just come in and I can assign which courses I want to do on those dates. So let's just copy and paste these across. Control C, Control V, like so. And now I have my training course schedule using the sequence function. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there.
And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.